greetings of the day to all of you well uh, today i am going to deliver uh, lecture number 9 today is monday 16th of january 2023 and i am going to deliver lecture number 9 in today's lecture i am going to discuss with you electric braking concept of dc motors electric braking of dc motors since we are studying about dc motor drives so we will uh, try to understand the concept of electric braking of dc motors <coughs> well <coughs> Uh, braking of a motor and its driven load is as important as starting a motor. There are many many applications where you have to brake the motor during the process. For example, when a lift goes from say one floor to another floor, it has to be braked, it has to be stopped. Similarly, when a crane uh, when a crane uh, takes a load or when a hoist takes a load from say ground floor to uh, so say through some height once it reaches its destination it has to be braked it has to be stopped similarly an electric train locomotive when it reaches a station it has to be braked or it has to be stopped there are many many applications in industries where it is required to break the motor and its driven load once you start the motor it drives the load the process takes place the industrial process takes place and uh, then after some time you are supposed to break the motor and its driven load you are supposed to stop it so braking is as important as starting a, a motor and its driven load now there are uh, fundamentally two types of braking systems one is mechanical braking system and another is electric braking system in mechanical braking system the mechanism you already know we use mechanical braking system in our vehicles there is a brake shoe and drum when you press the brake pedal the shoe rubs against the drum and you know it stops the vehicle whatever is the braking energy or kinetic energy of rotating parts of the vehicle it's wasted simply in the form of heat due to the friction between brake shoe and the drum mechanical braking system suffers from certain uh, you know significant drawbacks number one uh, the wear and tear is very large in mechanical braking system so that after you know uh, frequent intervals you are supposed to repair the brake shoe or replace it the brake shoe needs to be replaced after a certain interval of time large amount of maintenance is required and the mechanical braking system is not as smooth as electric braking system on the other hand electric braking system is very smooth it's almost maintenance free there is no concept of brake shoe brake drum so you are apply, applying the brake electrically so it's it's it, it's more smooth type of braking well in electric braking if you take the dc motors let us take a simple example of a dc motor say a separately excited dc motor this is a separately excited dc motor which is excited by voltage v this is the armature resistance ra this is the current flowing ia this is the back mf eb and uh, let us suppose this is the field winding separately excited field winding field voltage is vf and field current is if well, what we do is that we know that uh, the speed of the motor is given by uh, omega m is equal to V upon K phi minus R or R A divided by K phi squared into T, where T is the torque developed by the motor. We also know that the current, uh, draw, uh, this uh, applied voltage V is equal to back mf plus iara so from this you can get the armature current or motor current it is given by this equation v minus eb by ra so for motoring operation to take place for example if you take the torque speed uh, plane this is the torque positive torque this is negative torque this is positive speed 
this is negative speed in the first quadrant when the motor and the drive is operating in the first quadrant if this is the motor the motor develops a positive torque t and it runs in the positive speed let us assume that this speed is the positive speed okay now we know that torque developed by motor t is equal to k phi i a it depends upon flux and it also depends upon arbitrary current we are maintaining the field current constant hence we are holding the flux constant so that means armature the the torque developed by motor is directly proportional to armature current now this armature current is given by this equation v minus eb by ra so i will write here for motoring operation if you want the machine to operate as a motor for motoring operation ia should be positive i mean the current should go into the armature terminals when current goes into the armature terminals that means the machine is drawing electrical power from the source from the electrical source converting that electrical power into mechanical power and that mechanical power is absorbed by the load it it's used to drive the load okay so how can ia be positive ia be it can be positive only when v is greater than eb so you can very clearly see that ia can be positive ia will be greater than 0 if v is greater than eb as per this equation when applied voltage armature voltage is greater than back emf of the motor then ia which is equal to v minus eb by ra it will be positive and positive current means the motor is drawing current from the source it is not supplying current to the source it is drawing current from the source that current is flowing into the armature winding terminals and therefore your machine is drawing electrical power converting that electrical power into mechanical power and Uh, that mechanical power is then used by the load it's used to drive the load that mechanical power is absorbed by the load this is what happens so uh, since ia is positive so what will be torque torque will also be positive uh, positive current means positive current is possible when v is greater than eb so this direction of current is considered as positive current and since ia as per this equation when v is greater than eb ia is positive ia is greater than 0 and when current is positive torque is positive and positive torque is taken say for example in this direction so when motor develops electromagnetic torque in this direction which is the positive torque it results in the rotation of the machine and its driven load in this direction say clockwise direction so speed is considered to be positive since speed of the motor just few moments back we wrote the equation it is given by v by k phi minus r a by k phi whole square into t since torque is positive the speed is also positive so speed of the motor is positive uh, the speed of the motor is same as that of the uh, the direction of speed is same as the direction of the torque okay now let us suppose that after some time we want to break the motor we want to stop the motor or we want to slow it down we can do it either mechanically or electrically now uh, we will not use mechanical braking system we will use electrical braking system in electrical braking system what should happen in order to break the motor and its driven load if this is the motor and motor is running at speed omega m as uh, same as in the quadrant 1 now we are in quadrant 2 so what should be the direction of torque torque should be opposite to the direction of motion so that this torque acts as a braking torque and it slows down the motor it breaks the motor okay in the first quadrant the direction of speed is same as direction of electromagnetic torque developed by the motor but in the second quadrant when you want to stop the motor or you want to slow it down the direction of electromagnetic torque developed by the motor, uh, motor should be opposite to the direction of motion of the machine so so that this torque acts as a braking torque and it breaks the motor it slows it down so since t is in the opposite direction that means torque should be negative it should be greater than 0 it should not be positive speed is positive but torque should be negative so that what is power power is given by speed into torque speed is positive torque is negative so power is negative what does negative power mean negative power means that the machine is not drawing electrical power from the source it is generating its own electrical power and it may be supplying that power back to the source or it may be wasting that power somewhere in some resistance which we will discuss later on so negative power means that the machine is not 
operating as a motor it is operating as a generator so i will write here machine is acting as a generator and in the generation mode it generates the electrical power and that electrical uh, i mean how does it generate the electrical power it needs for that some mechanical power since it was already driving a load the the the, the inertia of the load and inertia of motor that inertia it converts into uh, uh, that is that's uh, that's in the form of mechanical energy and that mechanical energy of the motor and load it converts into electrical energy and then that electrical energy may be used somewhere in the system and hence the machine acts as a generator okay it acts as a generator so it is taking the inertia due to the inertia of the motor and its driven load it's converting mechanical energy into electrical energy so it is operating in the generation mode and in the generation mode we know that the direction of torque reverses in the motoring mode the torque was in this direction in the generation mode the torque will be opposite so therefore this torque will act as a braking torque for the motor okay now we know that ia is equal to v minus eb by ra just few moments back we have written the torque can be negative only when ia will be negative okay remember that torque will be negative only when ia will be negative because torque is directly proportional to ia when ia is less than zero or i mean i is negative torque will also be negative so the direction of torque will reverse like this okay so what does negative direction uh, negative current mean Ca negative current means that current is not flowing into this in this direction it is flowing in the opposite direction like this that means current is not flowing uh, current is not drawn from the source and then it does not flow into the armature winding like this rather it is the current is generated or it is produced in the armature winding because of the generation action of the machine and this current is then fed back to the source if the source is connected or it may be you know, flowing in some resistance if we connect some external resistance depending upon what type of electric braking we use so positive direction of current was this and negative direction of current is this now how can i a be negative i a will be negative only as per this equation if e b is greater than v so i a will be greater than or oh, sorry it will be less than zero that means it will be negative if v is less than e b or which means e b is greater than v that means back m f is greater than applied voltage when back m f is greater than applied voltage then direction of current reverses because current always flows from higher potential to lower potential uh, you can see from this equation when v is less than e b or e b is greater than v i a becomes negative so i a will be less than zero when i a is less than zero torque since torque is directly proportional to i a i a is negative torque will also be negative it will also be less than zero so this is what happens in quadrant two so that means if you operate your machine and it's driven load in quadrant two in the quadrant two the machine does not operate in the motoring mode it operates in the regeneration mode it operates as a generator and as a generator the direction of current reverses because v is less than eb hence the direction of torque also reverses the torque becomes negative and it acts as a braking torque for the motor and its driven load and it may be used to stop the motor or it may be used to slow down the motor and its driven load this is how electric braking can occur so for electric braking to occur ia should become negative okay and as per this equation ia will be negative if v is less than eb or in other words if eb is greater than v fine okay now uh, when the electrical energy is uh, you know uh, generated by the um, machine and it acts in the regeneration mode okay the question is where will this electrical energy go it has to be used somewhere now where will this electrical energy go it depends upon the type of braking we use now there are different types of electric braking system types of electric braking primarily there are three types of electric braking first is the regenerative braking regenerative braking this is the first type of electric braking second is uh, resistance 
breaking or armature resistance breaking or dynamic breaking rheostatic breaking or dynamic breaking second is dynamic or rheostatic breaking rheostatic breaking and third is called plugging or reverse current breaking or reverse voltage breaking plugging or reverse voltage breaking so these are three types of electric braking system we will discuss them one by one first of all we will take regenerative braking okay let us take the first type of braking that is the regenerative braking <clears throat> regenerative braking and we will take different types of motors first of all we will take separately excited dc motor and then we may take dc series motor so first of all we will take separately excited dc motor so in that separately excited dc motor this is the equivalent circuit diagram this is back emf eb and this is armature resistance ra and this is the field resistance rf which may be a variable resistance and this is the field winding the field voltage is vf plus minus vf and field current is if field current if is maintained constant it is held constant okay so the flux is constant i will write here flux field flux is constant this is the applied voltage or armature voltage v and in the motoring operation current will be in this direction because v is greater than eb but for regeneration eb will be made greater than v so direction of current will be reversed so when direction of current is reversed that means your machine is not acting as a motor it is acting as a generator and instead of drawing electrical energy from the source converting that electrical energy into mechanical energy to drive the load what it does it uses the mechanical energy of load and converts that mechanical energy into electrical energy acts as a generator and supplies that electrical energy back to the source so that means in the regenerative braking system the machine does not operate as a motor it operates as a generator and instead of drawing electrical energy from the source it gives electrical energy back to the source and when it gives electrical energy back to the source direction of current reverses so current becomes negative therefore torque also becomes negative and this negative torque opposes the direction of motion of the motor and it slows down the motor this is what happens in the regenerative braking system so in the regenerative braking system you, our motor uh, you know our machine uh, or our drive works in second quadrant not in first quadrant it works in first quadrant in motoring mode and it will work in the second quadrant in the regeneration mode now i will again write ia is equal to v minus eb by ra now for i a to be negative v should be less than eb which means eb should be greater than v now how can we make how can we make a current negative for current to be negative these are the conditions either the applied voltage v let us make this v less than back emf of the motor or if that is not possible then what, what we can do we can increase the back emf through some means so that back mf is greater than v in both the cases whether v is less than eb or eb is greater than v current becomes negative and when current becomes negative less than zero torque also becomes negative and it acts as a braking torque that means your machine is operating as a generator in the regeneration mode it is generating the it is converting braking energy into electrical energy supplying that energy back to the source okay now, now these are two different situations now if the motor is you know supplied by its own dc source say for example it is its own dc source then it is possible to vary this voltage applied voltage i mean if motor is supplied or excited by its own power source i mean it is not taking power from the grid it's it has its own power source then v can then v can be changed so we can change the v i mean we can decrease v 
So if we make V less than EB, since flux is here constant, EB is constant, what we make? We make EV less than EB because uh, since this V is controllable, we can temporarily or we can momentarily decrease this V so that EB becomes greater than V or V becomes less than EB. And when V becomes less than EB, direction of current reverses, IA becomes negative. That means your machine is now not operating as a motor, it's operating as a generator. Instead of taking the energy, it is supplying energy back to the source. So this is what we can do. Okay. So when it supplies energy back to the source, the the Breaking torque will be applied. So that, that what will that breaking torque do? That will slow down the motor. And when that slows down the motor, so when speed of the motor decreases, what will happen to back MF? Back MF again decreases. And it may happen that back MF again becomes less than V and it again, or in other words, V becomes greater than EB. And it again operates as a motor. But we will not let that happen. As soon as motor slows down, back MF decreases. So we decrease V further because V is controllable. So we decrease V and we maintain this relationship V less than EB. So we maintain V less than EB till we uh, slow down the motor appreciably. We slow it down to the desired speed or we may even break it. We may be even able to break it. We keep V always less than EB so that IA is negative, torque is negative. The machine is operating in the regeneration mode. It is supplying electrical energy back to those. It's converting mechanical energy of motor and load into electrical energy, supplying electrical energy back to the source. And we can slow down the motor or we can even stop it this way. Okay. So this, this is possible in, in industries. We can do this. So this is one way of doing this. Another way of doing this is that instead of uh, decreasing V, uh, v can be kept constant. There are certain applications where you cannot change V. For example, in electric traction, for example, if you take electric locomotive or electric traction, the traction uh, motor uh, or the elect in electric traction, there is a 25 kV uh, feeder from which electrical power is taken by your uh, motor, traction motor. And so therefore V is constant. It's not possible to change the voltage of the feeder because that feeder is not supplying only our electric train it's supplying many other loads okay so if we decrease the voltage of the feeder all other loads will suffer which are which are supplied by the feeder so in electric traction v is constant so we will not be able to reduce v for regeneration to take place in that case what we will do we will make eb greater than v so we will make eb greater than v so that IA, armature current, which is equal to V minus EB by RA becomes negative. When EB is greater than V, V we are holding constant, we are increasing EB. So IA, when EB is greater than V, IA becomes negative. So torque, which is proportional to IA, since IA becomes negative, torque also becomes negative. So that means your machine is not operating as a motor. It is operating in the regeneration mode as a generator, supplying energy back to the source. Okay. Now the question is how to make V less than EB or EB greater than V. There are two ways of doing it. In the first case, your load may be overhauling. I mean, when, uh, when this machine is operating as a motor, it drives the load. It supplies mechanical energy to the load and it drives the load. At that time, load is not said to be overhauling load. But let us assume, say, let's take the electric train. Let's suppose electric train is moving down the gradient. It's moving down the slope, down the gradient. When it is moving down the gradient, the train overspeeds. Because of overspeed, the motor also overspeeds. And when motor overspeeds, EB increases. Because as the speed increases, EB increases. And it may so happen that due to the overspeeding of the train, the motor overspeeds and EB becomes greater than V. This type of load is called overhauling load. I mean, when the train is moving down the gradient. Now, in this case, you are not supplying mechanical energy to the load. Rather, you are using the mechanical energy of the load and converting that mechanical energy into electrical energy. When the motor overspeeds, EB becomes greater than V. And, you know, when EB becomes greater than V, IA becomes negative. That means direction of current is reversed. That means your machine, which was earlier operating as a motor, is now operating as a generator. It's operating in the regeneration mode. And it is converting the 
mechanical energy of the overhauling load into electrical energy supplying that electrical energy back to the source and in this process torque becomes negative so that means if the machine was operating or running in this direction torque will become negative and this torque will act as a braking torque it will slow down the motor this is one way of doing this that means if the load is an overhauling load example i have given you when the train is moving down gradient it over speeds e become, becomes greater than v and automatically regeneration takes place and machine is slowed down because of this braking torque another possibility is let us suppose the train is moving on the level track it is not moving down the gradient it's not moving down the slope it is moving on the level track railway track which are which is not moving down the gradient on a level track in that case is it possible to make eb greater than v yes we can make eb greater than v by slightly increasing the field current now field current previously we had held at a rated value so we can increase field current slightly it's not possible to increase field current by a large amount because the field current is always already equal to rated current if we increase field current by a large amount it may burn the field winding however we can increase field current by a small amount when field current is increased by a small amount what happens eb also increases and eb when it, when it increases slightly normally the difference between v and eb is a few volts when you increase if eb increases and eb may become slightly greater than uh, v and when eb becomes greater than v again regeneration will take place okay so this process is done if motor was running at a speed very near to uh, this uh, no load speed so we have taken two different cases in first case overhauling load the machine is moving the load is moving down the gradient the motor over speeds that that means if motor speed is greater than no load speed which is possible only when for example a train is moving down the gradient the train over speeds and motor speed becomes greater than no load speed that in that case eb will become greater than v and ia which is equal to v minus eb by ra since eb becomes greater than v ia becomes negative so torque also becomes negative so regenerative braking is applied and machine is slowed down your drive now operates in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant regenerative braking takes place and machine is slowed down okay this is one possibility however here remember one thing see when the motor speed is greater than no load speed the motor speed may be greater than no load speed by a small amount in that case eb will become greater than v let us suppose v is 200 volts eb may become, become equal to 205 volts slightly more than e or say 210 volts the difference is either 5 volts or 10 volts in that case the current reverses the direction ia becomes negative but it does not become current does not become very heavy on the other hand if the slope of the track is very very steep then the train may overspeed by a large amount and because of overspeeding the motor also overspeeds and eb may become much greater than v again if v is uh, 200 volts eb may become 250 volts due to large overspeed and what is the difference difference is 50 volts and what is ia ia is v minus eb by ra v is 200 this is 50 so it is minus 50 by let us say armature resistance is 0.1 ohm so this will become minus 500 ampere so it uh, a huge reverse current will flow a current as high as minus 500 ampere will flow and it may burn instantly the motor armature winding so therefore what we do when this is the case when eb becomes greater than v by a large amount in order to reduce the armature current to safe values you have to you know under excite the field winding you have to reduce the in this case what we will do we have a field resistance here we will increase this field resistance rf is increased so that field current decreases and when field current decreases what happens flux decreases and since we know back mf is directly proportional to phi flux when flux decreases back mf also decreases so we decrease back mf so that it it remains greater than v but the difference is reduced for example we may reduce it to 205 volts so therefore 
when this is the situation there are two situations that the motor over speeds but it does not over speed much in that case you don't need to reduce the fuel flux second case is that motor over speeds by a large amount so that the difference between v and eb is very large which may result in huge current armature current negative current in the armature winding which is which may damage the armature winding in that case you have to you know reduce the field current and hence field flux so that eb reduces and eb no doubt remains greater than v by but by a small amount and i ia is maintained at a safe value ia is maintained at a safe value say ia may be 5 amperes 10 amperes or 15 or 20 amperes which may not be dangerously high and you know it may not result in the damage to the armature winding and hence you will ensure that regenerative braking also takes place so this is one thing another thing another very important point you have to learn from here is that when the motor over speeds eb becomes greater than v and ia becomes negative t also becomes negative regenerative braking off occurs and when regenerative braking occurs the motor speed reduces because when uh, when braking occurs what happens to speed of the motor speed reduces and when speed reduces back emf which is directly proportional to speed when speed reduces back emf also reduced and it may happen that when speed reduces by a large amount back emf also reduces and v again becomes greater than eb and again motoring operation takes place so therefore it is not possible to stop the motor by applying regenerative braking however you can slow down the motor you can hold it at a small speed i mean if it was running when when the train was going down the gradient and its speed was dangerously increasing the regenerative braking will occur because eb will become greater than v and what will happen because of the negative torque some sort of braking electric braking will be applied on the motor and motor will slow down so that it the train when it goes down the gradient it does not achieve it does not acquire dangerously large speeds its speed is held at a safe value so therefore you should remember that uh, the question is why regenerative, regenerative braking cannot be used for stopping the motor for stopping the train because when uh, regenerative braking occurs thus uh, the the speed of the motor and its driven load falls back mf also falls and since v is constant when back mf falls eb may become less than v and again motoring operation will take place so that's why regenerative braking is not suitable for braking the motor for stopping the motor it is suitable only for reducing its speed to you know uh, safe value say let us suppose we have a hoist hoist goes up it goes very up now it go comes down when it comes down because of the force of gravity the hoist may come down at a very high speed and if you want that this hoist should come down at a steady speed at a safe speed not at a dangerously large speed regenerative braking will take place because when it comes down the due to the force of gravity it comes down at a very high speed and at a very high speed eb becomes greater than v ia becomes negative t becomes negative and regenerative braking takes place and when regenerative braking takes place braking torque reduces the speed of the drive it does not stop it but it reduces its speed to safe values so this is the basic concept of regenerative braking so this was the first case when we can make eb greater than v if you know load is overhauling load overhauling load means that the motor speed is greater than no load speed example is when the train is going down the gradient or when a hoist or a lift is coming down second case is if motor speed is less than no load speed if motor speed is less than no load speed obviously eb cannot be greater than v it cannot be greater than v in that case how can we v of course v will be greater than eb because motor speed is less than no load speed but if motor speed is very very close to no load speed let's suppose no load speed is 1500 rpm and if motor is operating at 1409 rpm which is very close to no load speed you can increase you can make eb greater than v because what will be the difference between v and eb no load speed is 1500 rpm motor is running at 1490 rpm eb will be very close to v 
say for example if v is 200 volts eb may be uh, 196 197 volts there may be 2 to 3 or up to 5 volt difference between the two and you can very easily make eb greater than v if you increase the field current above rated value slightly so you have to increase field current field current is already at rated value you cannot increase field current much higher because that may burn the field winding you can increase it slightly and when you increase it slightly flux increases and since eb is directly proportional to flux when flux increases eb increases since difference between eb and v was very very small so very easily eb will become greater than v and when eb becomes greater than v regenerative braking again takes place and when regenerative braking takes takes place the motor slows down and when the motor slows down what will happen eb will again decrease and v will again become greater than eb and motoring operation will take place but at a lower speed so this is how we can make regenerative braking to take place if motor speed is less than no speed no load speed but very close to no load speed by increasing the field current slightly so that flux increases and eb increases now the question is that during the regenerative braking the braking energy that means the kinetic energy of motor and its dremel load which in mechanical braking system is weighted, wasted as a friction between brake shoe and drum here we don't have that mechanism here what we do just braking energy is converted into electrical energy and it is supplied back to the source the question is will source take this energy back it depends in some cases source has the capability of taking this energy back braking energy and hence regenerative braking will be applied and when energy is supplied back to the source we are not wasting the braking energy we are supplying it back we are saving it okay so this is a very highly efficient method of braking if the source does not have capability of taking this energy back then this source in in addition to supplying this motor it may be supplying many other loads then this energy may be supplied to the other loads if source does not accept this energy this energy may go to other loads and hence again there is a saving in the energy we are not wasting the braking energy we are supplying it to other loads which are fed by this source okay now there may there may occur a situation which is a very rare situation when the source will not be able to take this braking energy back or when there are no other loads only this load is connected in that case if source has the capability of taking this braking energy this electrical energy back then regenerative braking will occur if it does not have capability of taking this energy back and no other loads are connected then where will this braking energy go nowhere then in that case regenerative braking is not possible so regenerative braking is possible only if this braking energy is supplied back to the source and source takes this energy or if source does not have capability of taking this energy it should be supplied to other loads so this is how regenerative braking occurs so uh, therefore uh, for a separately excited dc motor uh, the regenerative braking can be shown in torque speed characteristics like this this is positive torque this is negative torque this is positive speed this is negative speed let us suppose uh, this is the rated speed no load speed omega m naught okay if you use voltage control method with the help of voltage control method we may be able to decrease the speed so what we are doing we are reducing the voltage applied voltage maintaining flux constant we have already studied this speed control method we can achieve speeds below the rated speed or below the base speed by reducing the voltage holding flux constant so this is motoring mode of operation and if you want speeds above base speed then what you have to do you have to go for flux control method or field weakening in that case you will achieve speeds above base speed like this so how do you get this speed by reducing the flux when you reduce the flux below the rated flux holding the applied voltage constant you get speeds above base speed so i am showing speed control which i have already discussed with you in one of the early classes if you want to get speeds below base speed you decrease the applied voltage holding flux constant and if you want speeds above base speed <clears throat> you go for flux control method field weakening 
reduce the flux holding voltage constant this is if you are using uh, the machine in the motoring mode if you are using the same machine in the regeneration mode then you can extend these torque speed curves in second quadrant like this similarly for speeds above base speed <clears throat> this is uh, operation of machine in the forward regeneration mode where braking takes place this is for speeds below base speed and this is for speeds above base speed so this is forward motoring mode ffm in quadrant one and when the machine or the drive is operating in second quadrant the torque is negative you can see because eb has become greater than v okay the two situations may occur if the speed of the motor is less than uh, the no load speed then you can increase the field flux and you can uh, make eb greater than v and hence regenerative braking will take place or if the motor has over speeded for example when the train is going down gradient or a hoist is coming down very fast then motor will over speed speed will become greater than base speed and obviously eb will become greater than v and current will become negative and torque will become negative so uh, a negative torque will be developed and motor will be slowed down so this is operation of uh, your machine in forward braking mode or this is also called forward regeneration mode so i have shown torque speed characteristics in motoring mode as well as in braking mode forward regeneration mode for a separately excited dc motor what about dc series motor is it possible to have uh, regenerative braking in a dc motor dc series motor dc series motor let us take a DC series motor and we see whether we can apply regenerative braking there or not. This is applied voltage V in the motoring. This is back here with EB. In the motoring mode of operation, the, the, the current is in this direction. But when EB becomes greater than V, the direction of current will reverse. It will be in this direction. And the regeneration should take place. Since current has become negative, torque also becomes negative, the machine operates as a generator, not as a motor. And in the regeneration mode, torque becomes negative and it slows down the motor, it breaks the motor. But regenerative braking cannot be applied here because see when direction, normally the direction of current is like this and field flux, you know, uh, back MF is like this. But when uh, in the regeneration mode, direction of current reverses, IA reverses, what will happen to back EMF? When direction of current reverses, the field flux also reverses and back EMF will also reverse. And then you can see these are two sources. This is the applied voltage and this is the back EMF. And it is, it is something like this. The two will add up to each other. So this may be armature resistance and all that. This is the applied voltage and this is the back EMF. In the regenerative braking mode, the back MF reverses its polarity so that the two voltages are additive to each other. V and E, B, they will add to each other. And the total voltage applied across the motor armature terminals will be nearly two times the applied voltage. And this will result in a short circuit condition. So therefore, regenerative braking is not possible in DC series motor. And hence, we will not consider it in DC series motor. Regenerative braking is applicable only for separately excited DC motor. Second type of electric braking is dynamic braking or rheostatic braking. Uh, right here, dynamic braking. In dyna dynamic braking, again, also, uh, you know, your motor, uh, which was operating in motoring mode, it is now made to operate in regeneration mode or generation mode as a generator. But in this case, the generated energy is not supplied back to the source. It is wasted in some external resistance. So it is something like this. Say, for example, you may have a, separately excited DC motor like this. This is back AMF. This is armature resistance RA. This is the applied voltage V. And this is the current, armature current IA. And this is field resistance. Sorry, field current. Field voltage VF giving constant field current IF. This is 
separately excited DC motor right here separately excited DC motor so it is in motoring mode you can see motoring mode so if we want to break the motor and its strong load we want to apply electric braking say dynamic braking then what we do field winding we keep like that we don't change the field current flux is constant we disconnect the motor from the source and if this is the armature resistance we disconnect the motor from the source and connect it through an external variable resistance R. So what is back EMF? This is back EMF. So <clears throat> we are disconnecting the armature terminals from the source and we are connecting armature terminals through external resistance R. So since back EMF is like this, it will result in the flow of current like this. So in the motoring mode, what was the direction of current? It was like this. And now direction of current has reversed. So therefore, IA has become less than zero. So torque has, will also be negative. So therefore, a braking torque will be applied. Now this machine, which was, uh, 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 which was acting in the motoring mode here, it will operate in the generating mode. It will operate, operate in generation mode as a generator. But instead of supplying energy back to the source, as was the case with uh, regenerative braking, we are wasting the braking energy in an external resistance like this. And while doing that, since IA has reversed, you know, a braking energy we are wasting in the external resistance, torque will become negative and it will break the motor, it will slow down the motor. And let me tell you, it will not only slow down the motor, this type of braking can even stop the motor. Whereas we have seen that regenerative braking can only hold the motor speed or it can slow it down, it cannot stop it but a dynamic braking can stop the motor also. So first of all, we know that speed of the motor is given by omega m is equal to V by uh, K phi minus R by R, let's say R by K phi square into T. So in this case, in dynamic braking system, when we apply dynamic braking, we disconnect the motor from the source. So what is the applied voltage? When it is disconnected from the source, V is equal to zero. And what happens to the torque? The direction of current becomes negative, torque also becomes negative. So it is minus here, and torque also becomes minus, minus into minus becomes plus. So omega m is equal, since V is zero, this first term is zero, it's gone, and minus is here, and torque also becomes minus, so it becomes plus. So our speed becomes R by K phi, square into t so this becomes the speed of the drive and then what happens since braking is applied since the direction of torque has reversed that means if the motor was running in this direction the torque is in the opposite direction it slows down the motor when it slows down the motor we know that back mf is directly proportional to speed when motor slows down back mf also slows down and when back mf slows down what happens to current? Current is EB by R. IA also goes down. And when IA goes down, the braking torque, since braking torque is directly proportional to IA, when IA goes down, braking torque also goes down. So braking torque, kya hota hai? Braking torque uh, the, the strength of braking torque becomes less and less as the motor slows down. As the motor keeps on slowing down, the armature current goes on reducing, braking torque magnitude also goes on reducing, and it takes a lot of time for motor and its driven load to stop. If you want quick braking of the motor, quick stop of the motor, what you, have, you will do? I will write here for quick braking of the motor and its driven load. R is reduced or R is decreased. with fall of speed try to understand this as dynamic braking is applied reverse torque is applied negative torque is applied because speed is in this direction torque is in the opposite the motor slows down when motor slows down omega m comes down and you know uh, eb 
which is proportional to omega m also goes down. When Eb goes down, Ia uh, also comes down. And when Ia comes down, torque also. If you want to maintain torque constant for quick braking of the motor, what you will do? You will reduce. As speed goes down, reduce R. When you reduce R, what happens to I, Ia? Ia is equal to Eb by R. When you reduce R, Ia, which was previously reducing, it will come back to, you can reduce R such that, that Ia comes back to its original value. Okay? And since Ia comes back to original value, torque, which is proportional to Ia, torque also comes back to its original value. So keep on doing this. When the motor further speed, you know, slows down, Eb further, uh, speed of further reduces, Eb reduces, Ia reduces, so go on reducing R. As you go on reducing R, Ia you can maintain constant. By maintaining Ia constant, you can maintain T constant and this will result in quick braking of the motor. I hope this is clear to you. So this is for a separately excited DC motor. What about for uh, shunt motor? For shunt motor, uh, the situation is like this. Let me show motoring as well as regeneration mode. This is the shunt motor, applied voltage. This is armature resistance. This is I. This is armature current IA back MFEB. And this is the field resistance, well, shunt field resistance, IF. Shunt field winding, which is connected across the, the so this is DC, uh, DC shunt motor. This is a self excited DC motor, whereas this was a separately excited DC motor. In shunt motor, you know the 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 winding is field winding is not separately excited it's excited by the same source it's connected across the armature in shunt with armature like this okay so this is in motoring mode in region in the generation mode what we do is that simply motor is disconnected from the source and it is connected to an external resistance r but field winding is connected here. So therefore, the arm, whatever armature current is produced here, some of the current goes into the load. Now this external resistance acts as a load and rest of the current flows through the field winding. Uh, now this is in the generation mode. Generation mode. Shunt motor in the generation mode when we apply the dynamic braking. Now the problem here is that uh, when the motor slows down, see, it's, it, the, the direction of current is reversed. IA has become less than zero. Torque will also become negative. Uh, you know, when torque becomes negative, so motor slows down. Because in the generation mode, torque is opposing the motion of the machine. The motor slows down. When motor slows down, the magnitude of armature current goes on increasing, decreasing and decreasing. Uh, the problem is that uh, when the mo motor goes on slowing down then uh, you must have studied in uh, you know uh, dc shunt generators there is a small amount of speed which is called critical speed below which there is no self excitation of the field winding taking place because for dc generator i am not now talking of dc shunt generator not motor self excitation takes place the armature current does not only supply the load, it also excites the field winding. But at a very low speed, which is called critical speed, the field current becomes, you know, almost zero. Okay. And when field current becomes zero, you, this field flux vanishes. And then when field flux vanishes, this armature current also becomes equal to finally zero because when there is no back EMF, there is no flux, there is no back EMF, armature current becomes equal to zero. Uh, that, then that means the there is no torque developed by the generator so i can show it with the help of torque speed characteristics i will show torque speed characteristics for both shunt as well as separately excited dc motor this is negative torque here it is positive torque this is positive speed so this is the Talk speed characteristic for resistance external resistance R1. This is for external resistance R2. R1 is greater than R2, and these are the torque speed characteristics for separately excited DC motor. Separately excited DC motor. 
However, for uh, you know, you can see R1 is greater than R2. I mean, when the resistance is increased, you know, uh, the current magnitude is reduced, torque magnitude is also reduced. You can very clearly see, say, for this particular speed, how much is the torque developed for resistance R1? This much is the torque. And for resistance R2, torque developed, negative torque or braking torque developed is much larger because R2 is less than R1. So it depends upon how much resistance you take. I have shown for two different resistances, R1 and R2. This is the, uh, that means your uh, machine is operating in the generation mode. This is for, this is the dynamic braking, forward dynamic braking. Here, this is forward motoring mode. Here it is forward dynamic braking mode. Okay. This is for separately excited DC motor, torque speed carriage for uh, DC shunt generator or for DC shunt motor. This is omega MC1 and this is omega MC2. Torque speed characteristics will be like this. And then instead of torque becoming zero, it will go like this. Similarly, when this speed goes down, torque also comes down and finally comes up. What is omega MC1 and omega MC2? These are the critical speeds. Critical speeds. Critical speeds are those speeds at which self excitation of field winding, shunt field winding, shunt field winding vanishes. There is no, uh, you know, uh, excitation of shunt field winding. No field current, field current in the shunt field winding will stop flowing. When there is no field current in the shunt field winding, there is no flux generated and there is no flux, no back AMF. And when there is no back AMF, there will be no current. When there is no current, there will be no torque. So that's why you can see when the speed is greater than zero, torque has already become zero for this resistance R1. And similarly for resistance R2 at critical speed omega M2, the speed is still, the motor has not stopped. It is still running at some positive speed, but torque has already vanished. Okay, then uh, the, the, since the motor is still running, torque has vanished, uh, does it mean that the motor will continue to run at this speed? No, because the motor has to overcome windage loss, friction loss, it will slow down automatically and finally motor speed will become equal to zero. But motor will take a lot of time to brake, to come to standstill. So therefore, this is for DC shunt generator. These are the torque speed characteristic for DC shunt motor. These are torque speed characteristics for DC separately excited DC motor and these are the torque speed characteristics of DC shunt motor. So therefore it is very much clear that uh, the DC shunt motor takes a lot of time to break to come to stop to come to stand still than a separately excited DC motor. Uh, in a separately excited DC motor the motor comes to stop very very quickly. The motor is braked quickly as compared to shunt motor. It's very much clearly shown from this torque speed characteristics. What about DC series motor? DC series motor. For DC series motor, this is the situation. This is field winding resistance RF. Let's call this resistance R, which is field winding resistance plus armature resistance. This is the back AMF EB. This is the applied voltage B. And this is armature current IA. This is motoring mode. Motoring mode. If you have to operate it in the dynamic braking mode, in the dynamic braking mode, you know, uh, this is the back AMF. The field winding connections have to be reversed. That means you have to connect it here and you have to connect it through external resistance R like this. The motor is now not connected to source, it's connected to external load resistance R, but the direction, uh, you know, the field winding connections have to be reversed. So this is not to be connected here, this is to be connected here and this here. The only thing I have done is that I have connected the motor to the load, external resistance R, are disconnected from the source and plus I have reversed the direction of field winding so that 
Now, what will be the direction of current? This will be the direction of current. Current is in this direction. So that the direction of current in the field winding remains same as it was in this case. Because if I don't change the field winding connections, then field current will reverse and field flux will oppose the, you know, it will, it will demagnetize uh, the field winding. And when the field winding is demagnetized, EB will become equal to zero and there will be no dynamic braking taking place. So this is how we do it in a DC series motor in generation mode. This is in generation mode. The only thing is that the field winding connections have to be reversed and the torque speed characteristics will be like this. This is positive torque. This is negative torque and this is the speed. These will be the torque speed characteristics. This is again critical speed omega mc1, omega mc2. And this is for resistance R1, this is for resistance R2, R1 is greater than R2. These are the torque speed characteristics in forward braking, forward dynamic braking mode for a DC series motor. Okay, so this is second type of braking, dynamic braking, and we have seen that dynamic braking results uh, in braking, complete stop of the motor, unlike regenerative braking, where we cannot stop the motor, we can only slow it down. The third and the last type of braking is called plugging or reverse voltage braking. I will write here plugging. In plugging, what we do, the direction of uh, the applied voltage is reversed. So, for example, if I take a separately excited DC motor like this, this is armature resistance and this is back MFED. This is the applied voltage V. This is armature current IA and this is the field winding which is excited by constant field voltage VF so that constant field current IF flows through it. What we do, let's call this terminal as A and this as AA. This is motoring mode, separately excited DC motor in motoring mode. In plugging mode, what we do is that it is interesting to see, see what we do. This is again A, terminal, armature terminal, this is AA. And this is field winding as usual, plus minus VF with constant field current IF. This is connected here. A is connected to negative terminal and B is connected to positive terminal. This is armature circuit resistance. The applied voltage is V. So what I have done in the, in the motoring mode, A is connected to positive terminal, A, A negative terminal. In the plugging mode, this is plugging mode. I repeat, in the motoring mode, A terminal A of armature is connected to positive terminal of the source. A, A to the negative terminal of the source. In the plugging mode, you can see A is not connected to positive terminal. It is connected to negative terminal. A, A is connected to positive terminal. So the voltage is reversed across armature terminals. Okay. The, the, the voltage is reversed across armature terminal. So this is plus, this is minus. Okay. So this is equivalent to now you can see this is plus, plus is connected to minus and then this plus is connected to minus. So this is equivalent to this. This is armature resistance. If I draw it, this is AA and this is A. This is applied voltage V. This is armature current IA. This is minus, this is plus. Okay, now you can see minus plus minus plus the two voltages are adding to each other. In the motoring mode, EB is opposing V. But in this case, EB and V, they are in the same direction. Like if this is V, they are adding each other. This is EB. The two are additive. So what is the total voltage applied across the armature terminals? Total voltage is V plus EB. Since EB is very close to V, there is a difference of only a few volts. So that means effectively a voltage which is equal to nearly two times the supply voltage gets applied across the armature terminals. So therefore what you have to do, you have to put a very huge resistance, high resistance in series with the armature 
which will reduce the magnitude of the current. If you don't do that, then the magnitude of current will be very, very huge and it may instantly damage the armature winding. Because a voltage which is nearly equal to two times the supply voltage gets applied across armature terminals. Why? Because the two voltages, applied voltage and back AMF, they add each other. They don't oppose each other. They add to each other. Total voltage is E plus EB, which is nearly equal to two times the rated voltage. And therefore, you need a starting resistance whose value is two times that used in regenerative braking to limit the magnitude of the current. So the magnitude of the current has to be reduced uh, and a high resistance has to be used. Now in this process what happens the direction of current in the armature reverses. For example in the motoring mode the current was entering the positive terminal but in the regeneration mode the current is leaving the positive terminal so IA has become negative and IA becomes negative torque also becomes negative and when torque becomes negative that torque acts as a braking torque and it slows down the motor and it can finally stop the motor as well. Okay, so uh, the applied voltage uh, we can say V is equal to minus EB minus IA RA in this case. Why I am writing minus EB minus? Because the direction of current as well as the direction of polarity or back AMF has reversed. So from this, if you find IA, IA will be equal to minus V minus EB by RA. Since EB is very close to it, so this will be nearly equal to minus 2V by RA. This is the armature current. Now we can very clearly see armature current is now negative, minus. So torque will also be less than zero. Torque will also be negative. So that the speed, uh, uh, you know, this torque acts as a braking torque. If you, um, and for a series motor, this, this was for separately excited DC motor, for a DC series motor, it is like this. An external resistance is connected. This is A, AA. Or let's call this A1 and A2. This is the applied voltage. This is armature current. Of course, this should be AA and this should be A. minus plus this is the back end so this is for a dc series motor in dc series motor also the connection to the source has been reversed is it now this a is connected to negative and a is connected to positive whereas in the motoring mode reverse is the case so ia is Again, in this case, also nearly equal to 2V by because V and EB add to each other. So it is 2V by R. So R has to be large enough to reduce the magnitude of starting current during the braking mode. Okay. So uh, the torque speed characteristics will be like this. Sorry, <laughs> torque speed characteristics will be like this. This is for separately excited DC motor. I will write here separately excited DC motor. And this is for series DC series motor. DC series motor one very important point you must uh, see here is that when uh, you know torque becomes zero uh, when speed becomes zero torque is not zero because your motor even if when your motor stops your motor is still taking uh, you know uh, power from the source and it is still developing the negative torque it is unlike you know dynamic braking system in which case when the motor stops the current becomes equal to zero and your motor comes to a standstill but in plugging what happens when the motor slows initially when you apply the plugging motor slows down and finally it comes to standstill when motor comes to standstill will current stop flowing from the source no current will still flow in the reverse direction and then your uh, you know drive will enter third quadrant that means it will uh, operate in the reverse motoring mode its direction will reverse 
if you don't want direction reversal then as soon as motor speed becomes equal to zero torque has not become zero it is still negative and if you do nothing your drive will enter in the third quadrant and it will run in the reverse speed in the first quadrant it, it was running in the positive speed in the second quadrant it is slowing down and finally coming to standstill if you don't disconnect the motor from the source the negative torque will then start running it in the reverse direction reverse motoring mode so if you want to break it you don't want to go it in the reverse motoring mode then as soon as the speed of the drive becomes equal to zero you disconnect the power supply you disconnect your motor from the power supply and it will remain in the standstill condition okay so these are the torque speed characteristics of your um, you know dc motor uh, in the plugging this is the forward plugging mode this is the most inefficient method most inefficient braking method the most efficient method i have already discussed with you is regenerative braking because in regenerative braking the braking energy is not wasted it is supplied back to the source or to some load in the dynamic braking that is inefficient method because in that dynamic braking we are connecting an external resistance and braking energy is wasted in external resistance as i square r loss however this method plugging method is the most inefficient braking method because in this method we are connecting in this method also we are connecting a resistance and this braking energy is wasted in the resistance and this braking energy is not only because of you know uh, the inertia of the motor and its driven load or kinetic energy of motor and its driven load it is taking braking energy from the source also because your motor uh, is always connected to the source so motor is taking braking energy from the uh, from the you know Uh, kinetic energy of machine and its driven load and also from the source so that's why and it is wasting that braking energy in the external resistance so that's why this is the most inefficient braking method why this is most inefficient braking method as because the braking energy because the braking energy is taken not only from machine but also from source and wasted in resistance r so this is the highly inefficient the most inefficient method of braking okay <clears throat> this was about now all these uh, braking characteristics can be shown uh, that's all about various types of braking electric braking we have discussed about regenerative braking dynamic braking and uh, then um, this uh, plugging we have found regenerative braking is the most efficient method of braking because in regenerative braking the braking energy is not wasted supplied either back to the source or to some other loads so there is saving in the energy however regenerative braking cannot stop the motor and its driven load it can only slow it down it can only hold its speed dynamic braking in the dynamic braking you can stop the motor you can slow down the motor as well as stop it it's an inefficient method of braking because the braking energy is wasted in the external resistance and in the plugging also you can stop the motor and uh, the plugging is uh, the most inefficient method because it takes the braking energy not for only from the machine and its true load but also from the source and wastes that energy in the external resistance so all these torque speed characteristics whether it is regenerative braking or whether it is dynamic braking or whether it is plugging they can be summarized in the form of torque speed characteristics like this this is positive torque this is negative torque this is positive speed this is negative speed so for example if you use say for example regenerate this uh, say rheostatic method of speed control this is forward motoring in the first quadrant 
your drive operates as a motor your machine operates as a motor this is forward motoring okay in the second quadrant you can extend these characteristics as i have already told you this is forward regeneration or this is also called forward braking and we have already discussed these characteristics earlier okay and if you have to go for dynamic braking this is for resistance r1 this for resistance r2 r1 is greater than r2 this is these characteristics are forward dynamic braking forward dynamic braking and you can extend them to this quadrant also so this is reverse dynamic braking reverse dynamic braking so this is forward motoring mode this is forward regeneration mode and this is um, this is reverse dynamic braking this is forward dynamic braking what about uh, this reverse motoring mode this is the reverse motoring mode this is reverse motoring mode okay and then this is reverse this is forward plugging because in this is forward plugging and what is this this is reverse plugging reverse plugging your drive may be operating in the first quadrant this is first quadrant this is second quadrant this is third i'm showing four quadrant operation of your drive and all types of braking when drive is operating in the first quadrant your mode machine is operating in forward motoring mode if you want to break it you take it to second quadrant now in second quadrant you have choice either you use forward regeneration braking mode or you use forward dynamic braking mode or you use forward plugging braking mode we have drawn these characteristics separately also while discussing the three types of braking here i am combining them similarly your drive may be operating as a motor in the reverse motoring mode this is reverse motoring mode in the reverse motoring mode it's like this so this is reverse motoring mode and this is reverse regeneration mode or reverse braking mode just like it is forward motoring mode forward regeneration mode similarly reverse motoring mode reverse regeneration mode if you want to break it you can break it through reverse regeneration mode or through reverse dynamic braking mode or through reverse plugging mode so forward motoring reverse motoring forward regeneration forward dynamic braking forward plugging similarly reverse regeneration reverse dynamic braking and reverse plugging so all these you know characteristics have been summarized in uh, the four quadrant operation of dc motor drive all types of characteristics whether it is forward motoring forward regeneration reverse motoring reverse regeneration forward dynamic braking forward plugging or reverse dynamic braking or reverse plugging all characteristics i have summarized in one four quadrant torque speed characteristic so finally i can uh, show you the directions of the currents this is positive torque negative torque positive speed negative speed when your drive is operating in the first quadrant as for in the forward motoring mode this is how we can show the equivalent circuit this is applied voltage v and this is back emf eb and this is armature resistance r or re the direction of current is like this right so in this case you can see that this is positive polarity of voltage voltage is greater than zero it is positive okay armature current ia is also greater than zero it is also positive remember this thing when you go from quadrant 1 to quadrant 2 so 
this is the situation then this is applied voltage this is back emf the direction of current now reverses because eb becomes greater than v current flows in this direction okay so this is forward motoring mode this is forward regeneration mode or if you connect an external resistance here then it will be forward dynamic braking okay so in in this case in the first case v is greater than eb in the second case eb is greater than v okay and what happens to the current what about what about the applied voltage applied voltage is still positive but current has become negative so this is forward regeneration mode in the third quadrant which is reverse motoring mode the polarity of applied voltage reverses because you have to run the motor in the reverse direction obviously the polarity of back emf also reverses and direction of current will be like this I, it will flow from v to eb but in the reverse direction okay so in this case v is greater than eb just like in the first case this is third quadrant but the polarity of back emf and polarity of applied voltage has reversed so uh, this is the direction of current and you know you, you can now see that v has become applied voltage has become less than zero armature current is also negative less than zero less than zero means negative positive current is this direction negative current is this direction and in the fourth quadrant the equivalent circuit can be drawn like this it's forward regeneration now back emf will be greater than in this case back emf will be greater than v applied voltage so current will flow in this direction so current has reversed it will flow in the in this direction so that means applied voltage is less than zero it's negative but current is positive so what is power power is product of voltage and current power is negative here power is product of voltage and current both are negative so power is still positive so that's why this is motoring mode but reverse motoring mode here voltage is positive current is positive p which is equal to v into i is positive so motoring mode here voltage is positive but current is negative so power which is equal to product of voltage and current since current is negative power is negative so it's braking mode here voltage is negative current is also negative so power is positive en motoring mode here voltage is negative but current is positive so power is negative so again braking mode so these are the equivalent circuits in the four quadrants okay so that is all about electric braking and different types of electric braking let us try to solve one simple numerical problem this is the numerical problem which we will try to solve i will read this problem for you this is for regenerative braking at 230 volts 500 rpm 100 ampere se separately excited dc motor with armature resistance of 0 0.1 ohm is coupled to an overhauling load with a torque of 800 newton meters determine the speed at which the motor can hold the load by regenerative braking neglect neglect the motor's rotational losses so if i take it closer to the camera you can pause your camera and you can note down this problem let us try to solve it we have applied voltage equal to 230 volts speed of the motor n1 is equal to original speed in motoring mode is 500 rpm and armature current is 100 amperes armature resistance is 0 0.1 ohm okay it's coupled to an overhauling load remember overhauling load means that the motor is not driving load load is driving the motor the example is again a vehicle or a train or a hoist coming down say a train is going down the slope when it's going down the slope because of the force of gravity the train moves at a very high speed so you know now your train over speeds motor also over speeds because of which back emf becomes greater than v back emf becomes greater than applied voltage and the motor operates as a generator in the regenerative braking mode so in this case the mechanical energy of the moving load is converted into electrical energy and fed back to the source this is the regenerative braking the load is overhauling load that means motor is not driving load the load is driving the motor okay and the machine is operating in the regenerative braking mode supplying energy back to the source 
coupled to an overhauling load with a torque of what is the torque T2 when, when when machine goes down the gradient I mean when the train or the drive goes down the gradient the overhauling load is a, a developing a torque of 800 Newton meters this is the torque of overhauling load determine the speed at which the motor can hold the load by regenerative braking neglect the motors rotational speed I have to find n2 obviously n2 will be greater than n1 because since the load is overhauling the train for example is going down the gradient the speed will be greater than 500 rpm when speed is greater than 500 rpm obviously eb will be greater than applied voltage v and that will cause regenerative braking armature current will reverse it will become negative torque will become negative and this torque will act as a braking torque and it will not stop the motor it will slow it down what is that speed at which it holds the motor we have to find that speed okay now we know that I have to find speed we know that uh, right here we know back m of EB1 is equal to K phi omega m1 okay similarly this is at speed omega m1 say n1 and at new speed n2 what is back mf that will be higher that will be equal to k phi omega m2 right so if i divide equation this equation this is equation one this is equation two if i divide equation two by equation one i will get eb2 by eb1 equal to omega m2 by omega m1 so from this i will get uh, omega m2 equal to eb2 by eb1 into omega m1 right so this is what i get what is my omega m1 my speed original speed of the motor when the machine is operating in the motoring mode is 500 rpm let us convert it into radians per second so it will be 500 into 2 pi by 60 so if you multiply 500 by 2 pi by 60 this comes out to be 52.4 radians per second this is omega m1 so this is omega m1 so therefore omega m1 is equal to 52.4 radians per second so i can substitute there here then i need to know eb2 eb1 and hence i will be able to find omega m2 which i have to find but what is eb1 and what is eb2 let us first of all find eb1 eb1 is the back emf when the machine is operating as a motor okay it, it's not it has not overspeeded yet it's operating still at a mode as a motor i will write omega m1 equal to 52.4 radians per second call this three now after this i will write we know that v is equal to eb plus iara iara as a motor v is equal to eb1 plus IA RA IA1 RA armature resistance is constant from this I will be able to find EB1 EB1 will, will be equal to V minus IA1 RA V is 230 volts minus what is IA1 IA1 is 100 amperes into armature resistance is 0.1 so that is 230 minus 10 that is 220 volts so EB1 also I have found this is here eb2 so eb1 i have also been able to find eb1 is 220 volts just note it down underline it this is eb1 so i have found eb1 i have found omega m1 now i have to find eb2 how to find eb2 eb2 for eb2 i will use again same formula v is equal to uh, eb eb2 plus ia to RA now now for motoring mode I have found back MF equal to 220 volts now let us suppose uh, we are now in the regeneration mode the load is moving down the gradient the machine is moving down the gradient so now load has become overhauling load and motor has overspeeded obviously when motor has overspeeded back MF will not be 220 volts because of increase in the speed back MF will be more than 220 volts and EB will be greater than applied voltage so that current becomes negative and torque becomes negative and regenerative braking takes place now how much is new eb 
I can find from this equation. So from this equation, I can find EB2, which is V minus IA2 RA. V is applied voltage to 30 volts, RA is 0.1 ohm, but I don't know what is armature current. Because what is armature current, IA? It is V minus EB by RA. Since the EB has increased, I don't know how much it has increased. So it has become greater than V. So I have your current will change. Current will not only reverse, but its magnitude will also change. Originally it was 100 amperes. It will have now different value. How to find that? Now we know torque is equal to, you know, uh, K phi. Let's call this torque T1 is equal to K phi IA1. Similarly, torque T2. This is for motoring mode. Motoring mode. For regeneration mode, it is K phi IA2. This is for regeneration mode or for regeneration. I know IA1, but I don't know this torque. Or what I can do, I can uh, divide equation this equation by this equation. So I will get IA2 by IA1 is equal to T2 by T1, right? So from this, I can get IA2. Because I have to find IA2 for this equation. I am trying to find that. IA2 will be equal to T2 by T1 into IA1. T2 is given to me. When overhauling load is having a torque of 800 Newton meter. It is given in the problem itself. I mean when the machine is going down the gradient, the overhauling load develops a torque of 800 Newton meter. So TA2 is known to me. IA1 is also known to me. IA1 is 100 amperes, but I don't know T1. T1 is the torque, uh, you know, when the machine is operating in the uh, motoring mode. I think I can find that. We know the power is given by P is equal to omega M into T1. Okay. And that means omega M into T1. What is power? Power is given by back EMF into current IA1. So from this, I can find, let, let me call this omega M1. I can find T1. T1 is equal to EB1 into IA1. See, power is omega M into T. I am writing omega M1 into T1. And power is also given by armature, this back EMF into armature current, voltage into current. So EB1 into IA1. So from this divided by omega M1. What is EB1? Just few moments back, I have found EB1. That is 220 volts. And what is IA1? IA1 is 100 amperes. Divide omega M1 also we have found that's 52.4 radians per second. So this will give me T1. And I have calculated it. T1 is 420 Newton meters. This is T1. It is 420 Newton meters. So I have found T1 also. I can substitute now in this equation. So therefore, so T1 is 420 Newton meters. T1 is 420 Newton meters. T2 is given in the problem 800 Newton meters. This is the torque of overhauling uh, load. So therefore, from this equation, IA2 will be equal to T2 by T1. T2 is 800 by T1 is 420 into IA1. IA1 is 100 amperes. So now this will give me IA2. So therefore, IA2 is, it comes out to be 190.47 amperes. So what is IA1? IA1 was only 100 amperes. IA2 during regenerative braking, current has reversed, it has become negative and its magnitude has also changed. It has become 190.47 amperes. In motoring mode, it was 100 amperes and in regeneration mode, it is 190.47 amperes. So therefore, what is EB2? EB2 is equal to V plus IA2 RA, V is 230 volts, plus IA2 is 190.47 as per this, into RA is 0.1. So this will give me EB2. So EB2 comes out to be 249 volts. So what is EB1? 220 volts in the motoring mode. In the regeneration mode, when the train, for example, goes down the gradient, its speed, it overspeeds. EB becomes greater than applied voltage. Okay, what is applied voltage? 230 volts. In the motoring mode, EB1 is only 220 volts, so EB1 is less than V. But in the regeneration mode, EB2 has become 249 volts, so it has become greater than applied voltage. So EB2 is greater than applied voltage. 
Uh, that's why current reverses its direction, torque becomes negative and regenerative braking takes place. Okay, so EB2 we have found, so therefore we can substitute now in this equation. Therefore, new speed, which will be obviously greater speed, is EB2 by EB1 into omega M1. EB2 is 249 volts divided by EB1, EB1 is 220 volts into omega M1. Omega M1 is 52.4 radians per second. This will give me omega M2. Omega M2, after calculation, it comes out to be 59.3 radians per second. If I convert it into uh, RPM, it is 59.3 into 60 by 2 pi. We have to multiply it by 60 by 2 pi. So radians per second will be changed into RPM. So that will be N2. So therefore, new speed N2 is equal to if you calculate it, it is 566 RPM. What was the speed of the motor in the motoring mode, N1? It was only 500 RPM. And when the train, for example, moves down gradient, the speed of train, speed of motor becomes greater. It increases, EB becomes greater than EV, as you can see. Current becomes negative because current is EB2 minus V by V minus EB2 by RA. Since EB2 has greater is greater than V, current becomes negative, torque becomes negative, and when torque becomes negative, the motor slows down. It does not allow the machine to overspeed too much. So therefore, what is the new speed? New speed is 566 RPM. In the motoring mode, speed was 500 RPM, and in the forward regeneration mode, the speed is 566 RPM, and it holds it at the speed. And what happens to the braking energy? Braking, braking energy is not wasted. It is supplied back to the source. So this is how we find new speed, N2, which is 566 RPM. So I hope this numerical problem will, uh, you know, strengthen your concepts about this type of braking. Uh, with this, I will end my today's lecture. In today's lecture, we have covered, you know, exclusively uh, electric braking, various types of electric braking, like regenerative braking, uh, dynamic braking and plugging and uh, we have seen that regenerative braking is the most efficient method of electric braking because in this braking method the generated energy or the braking energy is not wasted it is either supplied back to the source or to other loads it is the most efficient method of braking but this braking method cannot stop the motor and its driven load it can only hold it at some speed it can only slow it down then second type of braking is dynamic braking uh, in the dynamic braking we can go for very quick braking and we can stop the motor we can slow down the motor and its driven load and we can we, uh, we can slow it down and we can stop it also we can bring it to standstill and uh, it is a wasteful or inefficient method of braking because the braking energy is wasted in the external resistance the third method of braking is plugging in the plugging uh, again we can develop a negative torque a braking torque which can not only slow down the motor but it can stop the motor also but as soon as the motor and its driven load stops comes to a standstill the motor has to be disconnected from the source otherwise it will start running in the reverse direction and this is the most wasteful or inefficient method of Braking because not only braking energy is not ta only taken from machine and its drone load but also from the source and it is wasted in the external resistance. So this completes our discussions on different types of braking. We have tried to understand braking methods with the help of torque speed characteristics and uh, we have also solved one numerical problem on regenerative braking. So that's all about electric braking of DC machines or DC motors. Thank you.